Hello everyone. Welcome to your own channel Food Tech Network. As we all very well know that we have started a series dealing with various components of food. Earlier we have completed with carbohydrates and water and uh, now we are going to win with the third most important component of food that is enzymes. We all have studied enzymes but let us study them in a perspective of food technology. So without wasting any time let us see what all you are going to see today. In today's lecture I will discuss about a basic introduction of enzymes wherein you will get the chemical and physical nature of enzyme. The nomenclature of enzymes will be dealt next uh, wherein you will get to know how do we name enzymes and how are they scientifically called. Their unique properties such as their specificity, the mode by which they act the theory of enzyme action and the factors which affect the enzyme action both in situ and in vitro. So let us begin with it. Enzymes. We all know that enzymes are biological catalysts. Now what is a catalyst? In chemistry we all have studied that catalysts are some of the chemical components in the reaction that accelerate the rate of reaction. We all have studied that the catalyst are some chemical groups that increase the rate of any reaction. In this way, the biological reactions in our body, not only in our microbes, plants, animals, the rate of the reaction is the rate of the chemical components उनको हम कहते हैं एंजाइम्स केमिकली अगर हम लोग देखें देन दीज आर प्रोटीन्स इन नेचर एंड देयर यूनिक प्रॉपर्टी इज बायोलॉजिकल कैटलिस्ट नाउ हाउ डू दे एक्ट दैट दैट इज अ सेपरेट टॉपिक बट व्हाई व्हाट इज द वे व्हाई दिस द सबस्ट्रेट आर एक्टेड अपॉन बाय एंजाइम्स द मॉलिक्यूल्स अपॉन व्हिच द एंजाइम्स एक्ट आर नोन एज सबस्ट्रेट फॉर एग्जांपल इफ वी हैव अ मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ ग्लूकोस एन एंजाइम इज एक्टिंग ऑन इट टू कन्वर्ट इट इनटू पाइरुविक एसिड थ्रू ग्लाइकोलाइसिस then glucose will be called substrate because it is the molecule which will be acted upon by the enzyme. The enzyme converts the substrates into different molecules known as product. Definitely if we have a reagent or a reactant onto which the enzyme will act that will be converted into product which is chemically distinct from the reactant. There are two types of enzymes. If we classify enzyme on the basis of their location or their origin, they can be categorized into two different categories. The one which are isolated from the food are known as indigenous enzymes. They are already present in the food and uh, help in maintaining the biological mechanisms inside the food products. And if we use them by extracting them out and ext uh, inserting into our batch or into our uh, chemical media those are called exogenous means if the enzyme is already present in the food for example uh, we already know that an enzyme alkaline phosphatase is already present in milk so it will be called as indigenous because it is already present there but if the enzyme is externally added into the food product or during the processing then we call it exogenous for example during the preparation of beer or other alcoholic beverage we add yeast into it and yeast contains some enzymes which convert the sugars present in the substrate used for alcohol into the ethanol. So I hope the basic introduction is clear. Now moving to the nomenclature. The nomenclature is a process of giving name. What used to happen that earlier in the earlier times the non-descriptive names uh, were, uh, used to be given to the enzymes such as trypsin, pepsin, renin, lysozyme. We all have studied these enzymes in our uh, earlier classes. Now what was the base of giving this name? This was simply on the mechanism of using the stem of the substrate for example maltase, urease etc as the base part. If, you ha if I have maltose that is a sugar then I will use malt as the stem of the word and at last I will add ace. So the original method was very simple. We need to take two things. Uh, the molecule onto which the enzyme is going to add is given the stem structure of the name and at the end we add the ace. So for example if an enzyme is acting on urea we will take urea as the stem word and add ace at the last. So the enzyme would become urease. Similarly lactase, maltase, gluconase etc are all given some original or some uh, non-modern uh, names. Now there has been a recommendation in the past the enzyme commission of international union of biochemistry has given a unique uh, way of classification of enzymes enzymes are named with a's ending as per the type of reaction they catalyze together with the name of the substrate the enzyme that oxidizes ethyl alcohol to get acetaldehyde is named as alcohol oxidoreductase now this is a more 
conventional manner this is a more modern and uh, to be specific approach now you may wonder how uh, what we do in this approach we just look at the type of reaction the enzyme is catalyzing for example you can see if an enzyme is oxidizing ethyl alcohol into a product that is acetaldehyde then we will this type of reaction is oxidation reaction and we all know that oxidation is always accompanied by reduction so this is an oxidation reduction which we call as oxido reduction type of reaction and the substrate onto which the enzyme is acting is alcohol so we need two things the type of reaction and the substrate onto which the enzyme is acting so the name becomes alcohol oxido reductase based on the recommendation of enzyme commission we have six different classes of enzymes the first is oxido reductase which uh, uh, are the enzymes that catalyze the oxidation reduction types of reaction second class is transferase which helps in transfer of the uh, side groups or functional groups between different molecules hydrolases are the enzymes which break the bond between two molecules by using water by the addition of water lyases are the enzyme which helps in manufacturing or creating of double bonds without the release of any side group isomerase as we all know helps in isomeration that is intramolecular rearrangement of molecules and ligases are enzymes which help which would, uh, does work just opposite to hydrolase they join two molecules by forming different bonds now after understanding the basic Uh, structure as well as the nomenclature of enzyme let us see their unique property that is specificity enzymes uh, have a very unique property which is we call as specificity this means that enzymes will act only on a particular type of molecule uh, for example if you have having a enzyme x and you it has it will act only on a particular substrate it cannot act on all the substrate so until and unless the substrate the correct substrate comes into contact with the enzyme the enzyme remains unfunctional now as soon as the substrate will come into contact of the enzyme the enzyme will start working the specificity is uh, classified into six different categories bond specificity functional group specificity substrate specificity optical specificity cofactor specificity and geometric specificity mode of action the mode of action is the way by which the enzyme acts how do we all say that enzymes help in catalyzing the reaction enzymes help in increasing the rate of reaction hum bar bar bol rahe hain ki enzymes jo hai wo kisi bhi reaction ka rate increase kar dete hain reaction kam samay mein complete ho jati hai lekin but what is the mechanism kis tarike se enzymes ye kaam karte hain is cheez ko samajhne ke liye hamare paas ek complete graph hota hai and is graph ke through hi hum mode of action samajh payenge enzyme ka according to experiments जो एंजाइम्स हैं वो किसी भी रिएक्शन की एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी को डिक्रीज करते हैं एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी वो मिनिमम एनर्जी होती है जो रिएक्टेंट मॉलिक्यूल्स को अटेन करनी पड़ती है ताकि रिएक्शन प्रोसीड हो अगर कोई भी रिएक्टेंट एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी को अचीव नहीं करता है तो रिएक्शन कभी भी आगे नहीं बढ़ सकती सो द मिनिमम काइनेटिक एनर्जी which a substrate molecule should have to form a stable product is known as activation energy aur is energy ko gain karne mein molecules ko kafi samay lag jata hai to enzymes kya karte hain jo energy inko chahiye hoti hai aapas mein react karne ke liye us energy ki matra ko ye kam kar dete hain aap dekhiye enzymes decrease this energy and the reaction is faster up to 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 17 times matlab for example agar mere ko x joule of energy chahiye ek reaction ko complete karane ke liye to jo एंजाइम्स हैं वो एक्स की मात्रा काफी कम कर देंगे ताकि कम ही एनर्जी में ये रिएक्शन प्रोसीड हो जाए और ये ये करते कैसे हैं ये एक स्पेसिफिक साइट प्रोवाइड करते हैं रिएक्टेंट uh, मॉलिक्यूल्स को ताकि वहां पर जा करके रिएक्टेंट्स मॉलिक्यूल फिटली बैठे और रिएक्शन को प्रोसीड करवाएं ये ग्राफ आप देख सकते हैं ये जो अपनी वायलेट कर्व है ये प्रेजेंट कर रही है एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी विदाउट द प्रेजेंस ऑफ एंजाइम अब देखिए इसकी वैल्यू कितनी ज्यादा है लेकिन जैसे ही हम एंजाइम डालेंगे तो हमारी ग्रीन कर्व जो है जो कि हमारी एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ एंजाइम शो कर रही है वो कितनी कम है तो इतना बड़ा गैप हमारे पास आ रहा है दिस गैप इज वॉट वी कॉल एज डिक्रीज इन एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी बाय द इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ एंजाइम्स now as i said earlier that enzymes decrease the activation energy of uh, uh, the reaction but they do it by have giving the reactants a stable site now what is that 
that will be explained by the theories of enzyme action and the very first theory is lock and key model this is the oldest form of theory and is applicable to most but not all of the enzymes what uh, if i tell you the postulates there are several steps in, in which uh, the enzymes and the substrates act to form the product substrate binds to the enzymes at active site now what is the active site we know that enzymes are protein in nature these proteins have specific sites onto their structure wherein some residues of amino acids are present these residues can bind to the substrate but the protein structure ke ek specific location pe kuch residues hote hain amino acids ke wahan par jo substrate hai wo ja kar ke bind kar sakta hai ekdam fitly bind kar sakta hai ekdam stable ho kar ke kis site ko hum bolte hain active site and active site is the place where the complete reaction is going to take place now when substrate will bind to the enzyme at active site a complex will be formed this complex is called as es or enzyme substrate complex now this enzyme substrate complex will undergo internal rearrangement there will be several reactions uh, taking place at that point the reactants will react with each other with each other at the active site and products will be formed so from es complex ep kind of structure will be formed you can see this was the substrate these were the substrate this was the enzyme with its active site the substrates bound to the enzyme and es complex or enzyme substrate complex complex was formed rearrangements or reactions took place and a product which is chemically distinct from the substrate is formed and this substrate uh, converted into product is released from the enzyme and the enzyme is ready for another reaction in this way enzyme is continuously utilized in the uh, uh, process of forming es complex and releasing the product but it itself is not involved in the reaction because no part of enzyme is going to participate as a part of reactant or product it is just providing a space for reaction to complete correct now let us see what all factors uh, affect the enzyme activity see we know that uh, biological systems are very sensitive they are very unique most of the times we say that uh, our body cannot tolerate high temperature our body cannot tolerate so much cold temperature all the living beings we be it as humans or be it the food now when i say i i am being a food technologist why should we consider this in respect of living things this is because food is also a living commodity whatever food you eat whether you eat plant based diet you are a vegetarian a vegan or even a non vegetarian all the things are derived from living sources food is a living material so just like the way enzymes are at acted upon uh, on our body the same way they act they are acted upon by the physical factors in the food and like wise uh, for example we say that we cannot tolerate more heat more ph hum bhi zyada acid nahi tolerate kar sakte temperature ke ek optimal range mein hi reh sakte hain kyunki aisa kyu hota hai kyunki is range se dur jane pe hamari body ke enzymes kaam karna band kar denge and we will die similarly food ke case mein bhi yahi hai ki unke andar bhi jo enzymes present hai wo kuch physical parameters ki sharp range mein hi kaam kar sakte hain to sabse pehla aata hai effect of enzyme concentration ki enzyme ki concentration ka kya effect hai see what happens uh, if the ph and temperature are kept constant agar hum kisi food product ko ek jagah pe rakh rahe hain jahan pe uska ph constant hai uska temperature constant hai aur uske andar ki enzyme ki concentration ko agar hum log vary kara rahe hain to kya observe hota hai jaise jaise aap enzyme ki concentration ko increase karenge rate of reaction increase hogi for example hamare paas koi food product hai uske andar ek particular enzyme hai agar hum us enzyme ki concentration ko badhate jayenge to jo rate of reaction wo enzyme catalyze kar raha hai wo bhi badhti jayegi lekin us level tak jab tak substrate molecules hain substrate molecules ke finish hone ke baad aap kitna bhi enzyme badha dijiye your reaction will not increase correct so it will form a parabolic path substrate of uh, in, uh, sorry effect of substrate concentration the reaction velocity here also is directly proportional to substrate concentration why so this is because uh, but the thing is that if you are having uh, for example 10 molecules of glucose which have to be acted upon by the enzymes now if you will increase the substrate molecule then more and more reactant will be there and more and more reactant will lead to production of more and more product but this is valid only until the enzymes is at low concentration if you will increase the concentration if you will increase the concentration of substrate then enzymes will become Uh, or will attain a threshold value they will become saturated and no more substrates can be added so the effect of substrate concentration remains positive only until they are increased up to a certain limit after 
achieving or attaining the saturation point they cannot increase the rate of reaction even after increasing their concentration the third point or the third factor is temperature we know that uh, enzymes are after all protein and uh, theoretically if we increase the temperature by every 10 degrees celsius the rate of reaction becomes double but this is also valid only up to a certain ledge if you will keep on increasing the temperature then enzymes being protein will denaturate and the rate of reaction will become zero as the reaction would stop effect of ph effect on all the enzymes as i said are protein and they will work only in a particular range of ph if you will change the ph either if you will increase or decrease the ph beyond or below the uh, optimum range then the protein would denaturate and the enzyme activity will stop electrolytes also have a similar role so electrolytes are actually the uh, ions some metal ions and they can either increase the rate of reaction or can either decrease the rate of reaction but how is this so because some of the metal ions they act as promoter because they act join to the enzyme and help in catalyzing the reactant into product but some of them act as inhibitor they may change the structure of enzyme they may change the structure of protein and the reaction would eventually stop that is what we mean by effect of electrolysis so i hope you understood all the uh, factors that is the effect of enzyme concentration if you will keep on increasing the enzyme concentration the rate of reaction would increase but only up to a certain limit after uh, achieving that it will become hyperbolic or parabolic in uh, to be exact and uh, in case of the concentration if it will increase earlier but then it will become constant in case of temperature it will increase up to a certain limit then the proteins will denaturate ph should not be changed enzymes work at a particular ph only and electrolytes can have both positive as well as negative role some ions are acting as promoters of the particular enzyme and some other can act as inhibitor so this was all about today's class we will continue with the next next aspects in the next video keep watching and learning thank you